Hello, my friends. Uh, today's day 13 of our uh, reading challenge. We're in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 13. And we're getting to a, a, a tough section here for the next uh, today and the next two days. Uh, we're going to read from the same section for Mark and for Matthew's Gospel, the same discourse, the same sermon that Jesus has. And the question that it poses is, are we in the end times? Are these the last days? Interestingly, a couple of days ago, I saw the Associated Press, AP, actually had an article on their website about, are we in the end times, about what pastors were saying. I didn't read the article because I know the answer already. As I said, today's reading begins a series of three readings, all from the same section. A little background, they've, the disciples have spent the last uh, few days, two, three days, with Jesus in the temple, listening to Jesus teach and debate with the leaders. And as they're walking out, one of them innocently comments about how beautiful the temple is. And it was. If we believe the historical record, this was a magnificent building. Unfortunately, it no longer exists. So we don't know exactly what it looked like anymore. It's not there, just as Jesus actually predicted in this text today. And when he tells the disciples that it's not going to be there for long, the disciples can't imagine a place, a world, in which that God's house wouldn't exist. So when Jesus says that, their thoughts immediately go to the end of the world, the only circumstance that they can imagine where the temple would not be standing as it was that day. So they pose the question, when's it going to happen? When are these things going to be fulfilled? Two questions, actually. Today and the following two days, we're going to listen to his reply. Now it's time for your history lesson. I know you love history. So in the 60s AD, about 30 years after Jesus' ministry, after his death and his resurrection, the Jewish people actually finally accomplished the thing that they thought Jesus was going to do. They raised an army, had a rebellion, and they actually ran the Romans out of Judea. They had their own nation. They established their own kingdom again. Briefly. For a few years, they weren't subject to the Roman Empire, but the Romans didn't take kindly to being kicked out of territory that they had conquered. And so a couple years later, they returned in force. And what followed was a disaster for the Jewish people. What followed is actually fairly vividly portrayed in the words that Jesus gives here in the first part of this section. In the reading that we have today and tomorrow, the Romans uh, invaded Judea again. They laid siege to Jerusalem, and when the city finally fell, they destroyed it. Jerusalem became, for a time, what we might call a ghost town. And that magnificent temple the disciples had looked at that day, the one they, they had so admired, was almost completely destroyed, razed to the ground. There's only one piece actually that still stands today the, uh, that's still visible. Uh, you might have heard of the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. That's all that really exists of the temple the disciples saw that day. Unfortunately, the reality of the, of the circumstances that Jesus talks about, about the, the difficult things that happen, aren't unique to any single period of human history. They describe what happened in the 70s, but it's happened repeatedly throughout history, and it's even happening again today. So how do, what encouragement do we take from this? We're reminded that no matter what the political situation might happen to be, our God is with us and our future is secure. We can face both the beautiful days and the horrible days with the same confidence that our lives are secure in Christ. No matter what else is happening around us, we know that our God is with us. We'll read some more about this tomorrow and talk some more about this tomorrow. And we'll listen to another section of Jesus' sermon. Until then, God be with you.